This is going to be partly review because I snuck in some slope earlier. But this says uh, rate of change less than three. And it's saying investigate the relationship between a slope and a rate. Part one it says Robin is preparing to make taquitos for supper. She preheats the oven to 400 degrees. This graph shows the heat of, oven, of the oven increasing over time. Take a look at it. Here's your oven temperature in Fahrenheit, because oven temperatures are still traditionally in Fahrenheit. Time in minutes. Look at the numbers, and then let's see if we can answer some of this. What does the point 0, 50 on the graph represent? You're right. You're right. What? Starting time? Starting temperature. Original temperature of the oven. At time zero, the oven was at 50 degrees. Wait a minute, shouldn't it be room temperature? Actually, ovens, the insides are metal. They're often a little cooler inside because it radiates heat out faster. Also, for what it's worth, this is the physics nerd within me. Don't write this down. Actually, the graph should look like this. If you haven't noticed, ovens turn off, then they turn on, then they turn off, then they turn on, then they turn on. They cycle. But for the purposes of easy math, fellas, I need you to stop talking or I'll move you. Thank you. For the purposes of easy math, straight line. What does 5, 400 represent? Okay. Final temp. 400 degrees, and how long did it take to get that hot? Five minutes. Clearly a newer oven. Mine takes 15. Drives me crazy. C. C says calculate the slope of the line joining these two points. How do we find the slope? Slope is what over what? Okay, I find it helpful to draw a little triangle like that, because this is going to be my rise how high am I, careful when you're reading, how high am I right here? Think about it. I heard it. How high am I right here? It's not meant to be a tough question, folks. How high am I right here? No. Read. How high am I right there? 400. Good. How high am I right here? 50. What's the rise? Do the math in your head, preferably. Tanner. Okay, the rise is 350. 400 is the top one. 50 is my starting height. What's the change in height? What's the rise? 350. So when they want me to find the slope, slope is rise over run. It's 350 is my rise over. What's my run? Well, let's see. What value is this right here as an x coordinate? How far to the right? Five. Where did I start out? Nice, easy number to do math with. What's the run? The run is five. So the slope, the rise over the run, is that, and put it in lowest terms for me, please. 70? 70 even? 70 what? What are the units? Well, the rise is my y-axis. Look at your y-axis. What are the units on your y-axis? Read. Degrees per the run is my x-axis. What are the units on my x-axis? And call me silly, but that sounds like a rate from last lesson. What we want you to realize today is actually most slopes, if they're from real life data, not from the stupid graphs that they gave you last year that were just x's and y's and have nothing to do with science, most slopes, if they're from real life data, the slope is a rate. And you can figure out the units, Colleen, by simply looking the y units over the x units. And those of you that are in physics 11, and some of you are, or especially those of you that take physics 12, you've just learned a great trick. In physics 11 and physics 12, we actually ask you to recognize some graphs. Some students try to memorize all the different graphs that are out there. I tell my kids, don't. If they ask you what the slope is, just look at the units, and you can almost always figure it out. The slope is the y units over the x units. So part D says, 
The slope represents a rate of change. A change in temperature divided by a change in time. What units are used? Degrees per minute. You guys know the symbol for degrees is a little tiny zero hanging in midair. You can write degrees, but that's too much writing for me. So, it says complete the following. In this oven, the temperature is, first of all, increasing or decreasing. How do you know? So now we're trying to go from last year Math 10, where we simply said slopes were positive or negative based on uphill or downhill, to now we're trying to start to apply them a little bit more to actual data. We'll say increasing or decreasing. So increasing at a rate of, what's the rate? 70 watt per watt degrees per minute. You did a little bit of this in Science 10 last year, I think. If your teacher did the physics unit, you learned that the slope of a distance time graph was the velocity. And it was actually distance meters time seconds meters per second. You actually didn't need to memorize that. You could have just told it by looking at, figured it out by looking at the units. Go figure the trade. Part two. Often you're going to be asked to freehand rough sketch a graph. And what I mean by freehand rough sketch a graph is just label your points clear. I'm not going to make you measure or anything like that. It says this, water is leaking out of the bottom of a barrel at a constant rate. So if it's leaking out at a constant rate, it means it's a straight line, not a curve. When do we look at curves? Calculus. After two minutes, the water is level is 62 centimeters. Here's how I would show that. I'd put a two right there. That's after two minutes. Write that down. And how much water is there at two minutes? What does the question say? Now, really quickly, check the next number of centimeters. Is the next number of centimeters that the question mentions bigger or smaller? So I'm going to put the 62 nice and high because I think that's my biggest. There's my first point right there, 2 comma 62. This is what I mean by a rough sketch. You'll notice, Tatiana, I haven't counted. I'm not that interested in counting. That's a waste of time. Then, Tatiana, if I continue reading, it says, after how many minutes? Look up, kiddo. After how many minutes? Do you say seven? So I'm just going to move over. I'm going to say, how about seven right there-ish, maybe? Well, I know seven's not over here. I know I'm running out of graph paper there. I know I don't want to put seven right here because it's too tough for me to do the slope. I'll make a dumb mistake because it's such a cramped drawing. That, honestly, I can't give you a math answer. All I can give you is I've done enough of these to know it's much easier if things are spread out. But you heard me. Oh, let's try that again. Come back. Wrong button. Okay, here we go. Scares everybody at home on the internet. But you did hear me ask, hey, look, check your next centimeters number. If the next centimeters had been higher than 62, I would have put the 62 down here and the next number up here somewhere. It's a rough guess. I just want it to be an accurate picture, sort of. So I put seven over here. And what was the next, Joe, what was the next number of centimeters? Okay, that's 62. 22 is less than half. You know what? About there-ish. You know what? If they want me to do a scale later, I'll fit that in if I have to. I'll do most of this in pencil. But usually they don't, and I'm kind of lazy. I'll take a short approach first, and if I really got to make it prettier later, fine, I'll do that later if I have to. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to argue with you that I think we're smart enough now in grade 11 that we can probably get away without it most often and be lazy. Watch. Uh, connect, the, connect the two dots. Right? This is why, Shan, I always said to you, I draw a triangle. Because I think I can go rise over run here. What's the lowest this graph gets? Can you see it? What's the highest it gets? What's my run? Now I'm going to be fussy. Uphill or downhill? So you know what? I'm going to call the rise not positive 40. You know what I'm going to write in my little triangle? Why not, just so I don't forget, negative 40. 
did I need to put hash marks in there, or were you able to figure it out just by looking at the numbers? See, I'm going to argue that the extra hash marks sometimes are more confusing. They're prettier. And if I'm in science and I want accurate data, those of you that are in my physics class, yes. Here, we're just doing rough sketches. In fact, really quickly, right now, what's the run? See, I would argue without the extra numbers in, it's much more obvious that it's five. If I put a four and a six, I got to then think, which numbers am I using? I got to do more thinking. I would argue this is cleaner. In fact, I'm going to argue that the slope is negative 40 over five. And once again, this one works out evenly in lowest terms, negative eight. Uh, units. On the y-axis, what are the units of these numbers? And we're going to write that in in just a second. To figure that out, i got to look at the original question. What was the 22 and the 62? Your hint is, look for the units right next to those numbers in the question. OK. I'm going to put a little centimeters, and I'm going to draw mine vertically, like sideways. So the units are centimeters per. And what units would I put on the x-axis here? Your hint is, find the 2, find the 7, and then find the units that appear right next to them once again, which is why I don't want extra numbers on my graph. Minutes? This is not a graph that I would accept as a lab graph in a science class, but this is not a lab. I just want to get a rough idea of what's going on. And I think that it's uh, 8 centimeters so per minute, and the negative tells me, are we gaining or losing? We're losing. It tells us an awful lot. This slope represents a rate of change, a change in water level divided by a change in time. What units? Centimeters per minute. So it says complete the following to explain what the rate of change of this particular scenario represents. Water level is changing at a rate of blank, blank per blank. What's the rate? Negative 8 centimeters per, keep going, Rashawn, minute. What we're trying to do today is to get you to recognize that unlike last year when you simply said slope is rise over run, this year if we're giving you actual data, slope is a rate of change. It's a rate. It tells you something if you're using actual data. Oh, and uh, decreasing. How do I know it's decreasing? Downhill. Now that means something. At a rate of, it's decreasing at 8 centimeters per minute. You don't usually say that it's decreasing at negative 8, because then you have a decreasing, which means negative, and a negative 8, which means negative. I wouldn't take marks off if you said that, but usually the word decreasing tells people, downhill. Turn the page. Going back to Shan's earlier question, the other reason I knew not to bother trying to graph more accurately is the piece of graph paper that they gave me in that question. Look at the next question. Did they give me an actual grid in the next question? I'll probably graph that one a little more accurately because I can count. So there's rough sketches, which honestly I like more than actual grid paper because they're less cluttered. But grid paper has its uses as well. I don't know. Let's find out. First of all, once again, here's a lovely summary when you're studying. You might want to put a little dog ear on your book, or you might want to put a little post-it note right there, or something. It says, slope represents a rate of change. Positive indicates increasing positive rate of change. Negative in indicates decreasing negative rate of change. And then from science 10, Distance versus time. In science, what do you measure distance in? What units? Meters. What do you measure time in in science almost always? Uh, in science, usually? OK. So if you memorized in science 10 that the slope of a distance versus time graph was velocity, great. But you didn't need to because the slope would be the rise, meters, over the run seconds and hopefully you learned that meters per second is a velocity way easier to learn the units and have that tell you what the graph is than memorize what the heck the graph is Psst. need to uh-huh you're not sore yet after school 
Example one. Now, I'm guessing they want me to be more accurate on this grid because they gave me actual grid paper, but let's see. Dave entered his car in a long distance car race. He traveled the first 150 kilometers in two hours. After six hours, he had traveled 650 kilometers. Now, here's how you know. Tasha, what's the first word in part A right here? What's the first word? Plot means graph properly with X's and Y's and counting. You'll notice on the previous page, oh, they did say plot. I would have said sketch. I disagree with them. I think they should have said sketch. Um, look at the data that they gave me. What's the maximum number of hours that we're talking about in this question? Read. We're going to put time on the x-axis, and we'd better be able to fit six hours on the x-axis. Count how many squares you have on the x-axis. What would be a good scale that would use up most of the graph paper? Do I want each square to be one? I don't think so. Yeah, I think I want to go like this. One, you know what? Oh, no, I'll go like this. Two, three, four, five, six. And I'm going to call this time t. I'm going to graph distance in kilometers on the y-axis. What's the biggest number of kilometers this question talks about, Reed? 650. I don't think I'm going up by ones here. How many squares have they given me vertically? You're going to have to count. Uh, one, two, three, four. I got 13 squares vertically. What would be a good scale here? I think what I'm going to try first, and this is where I use pencil, I'll try every other square be 100. I'll go up by squares of 50, but I don't want to label that much because that's going to be really, really hard to read. I'm going to try going like this. First of all, I'm going to be clever because I can. I'm going to move that over out of the way. I'm going to go 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, and that works pretty good. If not, I would just get out my eraser and I would try a different scale, but I do try and think about it a bit ahead of time. Every two squares is 100, every one square is 50. I had to write small, but hopefully you can see that now that I've zoomed in. Okay? By the way, if this looks really messy to you, because it does to me, I would have no problem if you did this. If you went 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600. In fact, I would almost say that's easier to read by putting hash marks but not putting actual numbers there. Figure out what works best for you in terms of not making dumb mistakes when counting. It wants us to graph this, so what's the first point going to be? What? Comma what? Read. Okay, it says it wants me to include 0, 0. Why is 0, 0 included? Because before I start, how far have I gone? And as a number, that means at time 0, my distance is, as a number, Zero. Okay, what's the next point that they gave me? Now I got to look at the data. Read the sentence, he traveled. Yeah. So what comma what? Can you give it to me as x comma y in the proper order, please? I don't think it's 150 comma 2. So what comma what? 2 comma 150. This is a point here, and even though this appeared first, this is my x-coordinate because I put time on the x-axis. 2, comma, 150. I got a point right about there. In fact, exactly there. Yes? What's the next point? What went with 650? I can't remember. 6? So 6, comma, 650. 
right there. Okay. So it says, plot the ordered pairs, explain why zero is zero. Now, take out your rulers and if we lay our ruler down, will it go through all three points? Now, I'm wondering, is there a glitch in my counting? I'm a little worried here. Did I make a glitch? It's six hours and 650, is that right? And it's two hours and 150, and that is 150. Two, three, four, five, that is 600. That is 100. That is 650. I am having a problem here. After six hours, you traveled really quickly. Let me see if this is going to work here. 150 divided by 2. 650 divided by 6. Ah! It's not going to work out evenly. I think they glitched on this question a bit. Here's what I would like you to do. I would like you to connect the two points that they gave you, these two right here, with a nice straight line. Then what I would like you to do is connect these two points right here with a straight line at a different angle. Okay, so this second line is going to be like that, not quite as steep. And I'm going to make the graph small again. Okay, so first of all, question A says explain why 0, 0 is included. Why is zero, zero included? At time zero, haven't started, haven't gone anywhere. At time zero, we haven't gone anywhere yet. B says, calculate Dave's average speed between two hours and six hours. How would I calculate the average speed? When they say find the average speed, what are they actually asking me to find in math terms? Slope. So, go rise over run for this section right here. What's the rise? What's the highest we get on that line? 650. What's the lowest we get? Yeah. Uh, we're not going down. To, we're right here. Oh, what was that? What was it? Okay, what's the rise? 650 minus 150. I can do that in my head. 550, 500, isn't it? Yes? What's the run? From 2 to 6, what's the run? 4. Four. What's the average speed? What's the average speed? Reduce that to lowest terms, please. 500 divided by 4. 125 or not? 125? 125 units, kilometers per hour. Between two hours and six hours, Dave was traveling freeway speed, probably on the Coquihalla, fast freeway speed. Then it says this, by looking at the grid and without doing any calculations, how can we tell that the average speed during the first two hours was less than the average speed during the next four hours? How can you tell that he was going slower here than here? We're going to use a math word, though. We're going to say less 
steep, and that way I can relate it to slope. Okay. One more and we're done. His distance was increasing, but his fuel was decreasing. It's not a drumstick either. Or a lightsaber, or a sword, or a helicopter, or a backstrap. It says the graph shown here represents the amount of fuel in Dave's gas tank as a function of the distance traveled. And this, Cheyenne, goes back to your question. I would argue this graph is way less cluttered and easy to read than this graph. I like graphs with fewer numbers myself. That's my preference, but I find them way easier to read. Calculate the slope of the line. Calculate the slope of the line. Slope is what over what? Rise over run. First of all, what's my rise, positive or negative? And how can you tell just by glancing at this? Which one? I've heard both. Negative. How high are we right here? 50. By the way, most common mistake, kids go run over rise. I think I told you I had a kid in physics 12 about eight years ago who got perfect on the provincial exam and on the last question because he was so relieved he was almost done, he went run over rise because he was in a rush. So 50, what's my height right here? What's the run? Sorry, what's the rise? As I do it too. What's the rise? 50, 40, what's the rise? Ten. Right? Fifty high, forty high, we've dropped ten. Dropped negative. Fifty high, forty high. Okay. Need you back here. You okay? Deep breaths, calm blue ocean and all that stuff. Nicole, what's my X coordinate right here? Twenty. What's my X coordinate right here? What's the run? Uh, okay. Yeah, usually you, they'll pick nice enough numbers you can do them in your head. Run is 100. What's the slope in lowest terms? It's negative. And you can either write that as a fraction or you can write that as a decimal. It depends on the situation, to be honest. Sometimes you want it as a decimal, especially if you're dealing with money. Money is usually dollars and cents. Sometimes you'll want it as a fraction. So it says complete the following statements. The amount of fuel in the tank is increasing or decreasing? How can you tell just by glancing at the graph? Decreasing. Okay. Decreasing. The rate of change of fuel in the fuel tank is how much? Negative 0.1 or 1 over 10. I'll use the decimal here because there's not much room to write a fraction. What are the units? Number of what? What's this being measured in on the y-axis? Liters. Abbreviation for liters is the written letter L, lowercase l, right? Liters per. What are the units? Kilometers. That's his... Well, we call it mileage because we used to measure it in miles, but now we measure it. That's uh, his numbers of liters per kilometer. That's how much gas mileage he's getting. The amount of fuel in the fuel tank is decreasing at a rate of 0.1 liters per kilometer. Why didn't you put a negative in front here? Because it said the word decreasing, and the word decreasing implies negative. Sam, what's the whole point of this? What I want you to realize is slopes mean something. What do they mean? Look at the units. And almost all the time, if you look at the y-axis units and you look at the x-axis units and you realize that's your rate, you'll be able to figure out what it is because you're old. You've seen things. Turn the page. This is why you have the rulers. It says, assignment. Consider the following circles, each with center O. 
What you're going to do is you're going to use your rulers and you're going to measure each of those diameters. I can't do it up here because the size of the circle on my tablet is different from the actual size on your workbook. So my answers will be totally different from you. But fill in the chart here. Then once you've filled in the chart, they would like you to do a rough graph diameter versus circumference. They've told you the circumference for circle A, circle B, circle C, circle D, circle E. You should find if you measure carefully and you record the data on a chart that it forms roughly a straight line. So measure the diameter of each circle to the nearest centimeter. Record each diameter on the table above. Plot the points. Then it says calculate the slopes of the following line segments I'm not that interested in that one, cross it out, or that one, cross it out, or that one, cross it out, or that one, cross it out. I want you to do the slope from the smallest to the biggest. And then complete part D. If you're stuck, we'll talk about it next class. Turn the page, please. Number two, question two. Here they're giving you one, two, three, four different points. So if they want the average speed, when they're asking you for the average speed, what are you actually finding on the graph? The slope. Okay. Um, three, we're going to, uh, am I going to, um, no, I'm going to skip three. Try four. You have to think about it a little bit. Five is good. Here in number five, I wouldn't do an accurate graph. I would do a rough sketch like we did for that first graph. You're graphing sales and earnings. Rough guess. Um, six is good. Skip seven. Eight A and B. Number nine, very quickly. Okay. So we're going to pause there. Oh, don't want that one. I want Mr. Duick. You. Yep.